Welcome to Session 5 on ICT Applications for Mitigating Climate Change. The objectives of the session are to raise appreciation of the need to reduce greenhouse gas and reduce energy consumption, and to provide IC examples of ICT applications for these. Why do we need to mitigate climate change? Scientists have found that the Earth has been warming more than it should, and it is most likely due to the greenhouse gases that our societies have released into the atmosphere. We can't take back the past, so let us focus upon how to reduce the amount that we release today. We will need different approaches to respond to the different ways that we tend to release these gas gases, whether from manufacturing, from deforestation, or from energy production. There are arguments that we need to keep our emissions below 1,350 parts per milliliter by the year 2100. Other arguments favor a stricter limit of 450 parts per milliliter. There are also arguments over what to do, with the options as to do nothing or regulate emissions to maintain current levels or even reduce emissions to lower and lower levels. Check out the climate change simulation described in the Something to Do section of Chapter 4 to learn more about these options and their possible effects. How can we use ICTs to help us reduce our emissions? They have applications for facilitating environmental observation of greenhouse gases. There are applications for enhancing the efficient use of energy and reducing greenhouse gas emissions in this sector and by promoting a smart transformation. Now let's talk about environmental observation. Sensors can be installed on the ground or aboard satellites and aircrafts to help us monitor the climate, atmosphere and its pollution, and features of the environment. These sensors help us gather data that are going to be used for models of climate, weather, and hydrology. What about energy efficiency? Sensors can help monitor how much energy is produced or consumed. Computer models of demand can help forecast when usage will peak or ebb. Systems can be computerized to regulate the timing of production and distribution of power. Now let's go on to digitization and dematerialization. ICTs can help substitute products made of paper and activities that require energy with alternatives that require less carbon. Through digitization and dematerialization, we can use less paper, require less travel, and ultimately release less greenhouse gases. ICTs can help us in the uh, transformation of society. It has a unique ability to promote innovation and make us more conscious of how much energy that we use and how much greenhouse gases we emit. We can therefore rethink our life and transform our economies towards eco-friendliness. So this is the smart transformation. Show, monitor, and account for our energy use, rethink our lives, and transform our economies. Now we will look at examples of ICT uses for climate change mitigation. The first is a case study of how countries around the world have formed an agreement to share information about the global climate. The data is acquired from satellite-borne sensors and anyone may obtain the available data over the internet. The second case study shows how researchers, scientists, and rural villagers have come together to calculate how much carbon is stored in the forests of three watersheds in Nepal. They use a combination of measurements on the ground, measurements via satellite-borne sensors, and then use computer software to calculate the amount of carbon stored. The case study on small hydropower automatic control is about how power can be generated for a tiny area using water and computers can control the amount of energy produced and distributed. 
Small hydropower automatic control has already been installed in places in Afghanistan, Thailand, and China. The state of Orissa in India is reducing travel by officials. They have set up video conferencing studios in major government offices, and therefore this helps reduce GHG emissions from travel. Next is another case study from India on the use of networked green IT systems to store, access, and analyze the records for 144 hospitals, 620 insurance branches, and 1,388 medicine dispensaries and clinics. The project featured a single IT card, ID card that will in, uh, allow an insured individual to access all of these facilities in the network. The next, day, uh, the next case study is on call centers, and it might interest those of you who plan to own your own business. Have you thought of setting up a call center that connects you to thousands of clients living all around the world? One can take advantage of the internet so that you can have a global reach for your business without having to travel to provide the services. This case study on the Shanghai Tower is for the would-be architects among you. Building information modeling software is available to check that your building design is eco-efficient in terms of construction materials used and energy that will be consumed during the lifetime of the building. Finally, if you hate being stru stuck in traffic, you will be relieved to know that more and more urbanized areas are investing in traffic information systems. Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia, has a system that monitors traffic using closed-circuit television. Experts then analyze the images for congestion and traffic accidents and send out alerts and provide alternative routes to commuters. This information is disseminated using roadside electronic billboards, the internet, and call a call center. Remember, the less time spent stuck in travel means less greenhouse gas emissions. Let us summarize the main points of the session. First, we must reduce our emissions to, of greenhouse gases. Second, we should strive to eliminate inefficiencies in energy production, distribution, and consumption. Third, let us switch to low carbon activities. And fourth, ICTs can facilitate all of these through applications in environmental observation, energy production and use, and through digitization and dematerialization.